Hi there guys, welcome back. This week on Apple Views, I've got stories on iPhone 14, of course, iOS 16, Netflix, but first we're gonna start with a story about HomePod. Hi there guys, I'm David, it's great to see you back. If you haven't already subscribed, now be a great time to do so. And don't forget to drop me a like as well, it really helps me and the channel out. So, on to that HomePod news. Released originally in 20, well I say released, it was announced in 2017 and the writing was almost on the wall there and it wasn't actually released until a year later in early 2018. It only hung around for a couple of years, being withdrawn in the early part of 2021 before it gave way to HomePod Mini. But it was a strange life existence and a lifespan that HomePod had. I mean, it was very unApple like for instance, in its short life, they reduced the cost from the original $349 down to $299. And not only that, if you're an Apple employee, you get some massive discounts on it as well. You could pick one up for $149. So in the background, something clearly didn't add up for them, but, but people that have got them and have used them say they sound so far superior to the HomePod Mini, which stands to reason bigger woofers, bigger speak all round. The trouble is it's running the A8 processor, which obviously is old, and it struggles with functionality that we take for commonplace these days, for instance, with Siri. But it's such a shame that they didn't ever get upgraded and we've got kind of this hole in the market. It's something I wrote about on a blog this week about where Apple may go with their home entertainment market. But just a word of caution, if you're hearing a popping sound on your HomePod at the minute, apparently that means it could be on its, on its last legs. So take care of it if you hear that sound. Just cherish the HomePod that you've got because you've got a collector's item as well. As I say, originally they came out priced $349. If you try to buy a new or a nearly unused one now on eBay, they're going to run you around about $500. So they are actually going up in price. So if you've got a HomePod, take care of it, show it some love. And so onto the iOS 16 news that I said I had in the video this week. And we've got some more news coming out about it. None of it's too exciting, but I understand there's going to be quite a lot of attention on the focus mode. Of course, focus lets users uh, choose about notifications and apps that are notifying them during the course of the day. Apparently there's going to be more granular refinement on the focus mode app. And also according to Mark Gurman this week, there's gonna be some health tracking features on watch OS, there's gonna be improved multitasking features on iPad OS, and also the news app, the Apple news app is gonna be getting some love as well. So still nothing too exciting, no big change it sounds like at the moment. It's strange, it's very quiet, virtually no leaks at all on iOS updates, but that's what I've got for you this week. On to iPhone 14 news now. Yeah, I know, you're going to be bored with it by the time the phone gets here later this year, but I have to report on it, it's my job, so just bear with. It was almost certainly confirmed this week that the two larger phones, the 14 Pro and Pro Max, will be running a faster chip than the two smaller phones in the range. And there was a tweet from Ming-Chi Kuo this week talking about the front-facing autofocus camera. The sense on that is going to be changed from f stop 1.9, which means you'll be able to get a nice blurry background on your selfies. There was also more news from Ming-Chi Kuo talking about the phone that's coming out in 2016, saying for the first time, that should have a full screen, an edge-to-edge -edge full screen with under the screen face detection. And there was one other little gem I picked up this week from that great tweeter and leaker, Shrimp Apple Pro. He showed us some uh, images and some CADs made up of the front of the phone and the screen protectors that are being made up for them. Well, on the two bigger phones, the earpiece at the top is so slim, they haven't even bothered to cut out for it on the screen protector. Was it enough space? So there you go. Nice, short and brief. That's the news I've got for you this week on iPhone 14. And just before moving on from iPhone 14, you may be called last week, I popped some images that I found from Shrimp Apple Pro from one of his tweets that were showed CAD images of the iPhone 14 range. It turns out they weren't actually directly from Apple of the iPhone 14. They were from case manufacturers gearing up production for the cases for the phone later this year. But what it does show us is there is no iPhone 14 mini and it just gives us better overall dimensions of the phone and shows us the size of the large camera bump that's going to be on the phones this year as well. Let's talk Apple store news now and unions. Over at the store in Northwest Atlanta in the Cumberland Mall, it looks like that could be the first store, first Apple store to go unionized. There's 
There's going to be a meeting on the 5th or 7th of May to confirm it, but 70% of the 104 strong workforce there have said they're in favour of going with the union, and it's all to do with minimum pay. It seems that the store there is paying $20 an hour, and the minimum pay for an adult with a single child should be around about $31 an hour. So there's a discrepancy there, and it could be for the first time that's going to have some union influence in a store with Apple's name above the door. And I can only imagine that Apple are not going to be too pleased about that one. Let's talk politics just for a moment, to do with Apple, of course, and it's all to do with where some of Apple's profits are going. Turns out in the first quarter of this year, they've spent $2.5 million on lobbying. It's all to do with the App Store and the proposed legislation changes that could be coming in. They're trying to fight against them, so they see it's money well spent, but it's a massive increase on the same period last year. It's a 34% increase on political and lobbying spends all to try to protect their precious, precious app store and the privacy laws and legislation changes that are coming along possibly that would affect them. So let's talk music streaming and in particular Tidal. Do you subscribe to the lossless music streaming service? I did for time until Apple Music went lossless, then it didn't seem to make much sense for me. Anyway, if you do still enjoy the service, the good news is on the latest update coming for iOS devices, but only iPhone and iPad, not HomePod minis and HomePods, you'll soon be able to use Siri to play content from. But as I say, it's restricted purely to to iPhone and iPad for the time being, but at least it's a step in the right direction. Do you use Tidal? Let me know. It's got some great music on there. It really was a very good service and very affordable too. It's just Apple, I already had a subscription, it kind of stole their thunder. And here's something you'd never thought you'd hear me say. Some good news about the Lightning Cable. Well, not the Lightning Cable exactly, but kind of making the best of it. Yes, we'd all like to see USB-C charging on an iPhone, but it ain't gonna happen. Not for a while, we know that. It's gonna go portless before it goes USB-C, I'm sure. So what they're looking to do is to make the best of the Lightning port. At the moment, it's only transferring at USB 2 speeds. The Apple engineers have realized that it doesn't have to transfer at that speed. It's not locked into that. It can be developed to go up to USB 3, and that would make a massive difference in transfer. The whole issue is that since the 13s came out, recording in 4K ProRes, and there's talk even of 8K recording on the iPhone 14s, it's getting those files off the phone and into the computer. And it's just slow at the moment. It's painfully slow. AirDrop for sizable files isn't an answer. I use image capture, which works okay, but it is restricted exactly by this, by the lightning cable. So if we went up from USB 2 to USB 3, it means that the transfer speeds would increase from 480 megabits per second on USB 2 speeds we've got at the moment. If they went up to USB 3, 3.0 speeds, we'd get an increase up to five gigabits per second. So it's a massive jump. And at least it's some way towards going to help get us these big files off the phone. It's great they record them, but we just can't get them off. <laughs> now, I'm going to tread careful here. I've got a story to report to do with cyclists. There, I did it. I didn't say anything bad about cyclists. <laughs> but if you're a cyclist and use the Cycling Directions app, in maps on iPhone. Well, the good news is they've quietly been working on it in the background to improve it. With cycling directions, it considers elevation, how busy a street is and whether there's any stairs or anything on the route like that. It was originally supported and launched in Barcelona, London, mainland China and Canada. And recently it's had updates in Ohio and West Virginia, as well as updates coming for Illinois, India and Michigan and Virginia as well. So if you use the cycling maps function on your phone, quietly in the background, Apple have been working on it to make it even better and more detailed for you. Safe riding. I'm sure you, like me, are a WhatsApp user, and if you are and you've been missing reactions, soon you're going to be able to use reactions on your messages like you can in iMessage and also on Instagram's direct messages. All you'll need to do is update the app to the latest version and then simply press and hold on a speech bubble and you'll get the full range of emotions rather than the few that you've got open to at the moment to use as reactions. Where would we be without reactions on text messaging? It's the quickest and almost rude way to get rid of somebody, isn't it? Just like press, hold, thumbs up. I've read your message. I want nothing more to do with you. And as Foxconn and Apple get back up to full speed production now after the recent lockdowns in China, over in India, demand is so high for iPhone that they're increasing the size of their plant almost by double there and taking on a much bigger workforce as well. It seems demand for iPhone in India is growing at a rate they can barely keep up with. And they've been given special grace by the Indian government as well, going by a report that I read in the Economic Times of India. They've been given clearance to do something called denotify, which I believe just speeds the whole process up so they can get the factory built and take on more staff as well. So demand for Apple in India 
is on the up. This week, an environmental press release landed with me from Tim and Apple, and it was all telling us about the way they are really pushing forward the boundaries of what they're doing with recycling. For the first time last year, they introduced recycled gold, or certified recycled gold, and they also doubled the use of recycled tungsten, rare earth elements such as cobalt. Nearly 20% of all materials used in the production of Apple are now recycled. And on Earth Day itself, there were special events being held on Snapchat, and you could also support the World Wildlife Fund by using Apple. Apple Pay. So as per last week, Apple really making a push about the environment and about time too that these big companies show us the way forward. Let's just talk Apple Silicon for a moment and the making of Apple Silicon more importantly. Until recently, we thought everything happened at the TSMC facility, but it turns out they actually outsourced quite a lot of the parts of that chip to other companies, to third party companies before assembly at TSMC. Companies such as Unimicron and Ibidin are being used and also Samsung Microelectronics are making parts as well. It was all revealed in an article by the Asian newspaper called The Elec, and it just threw some light on the fact that not everything is under one roof. And in seed, it's going to be exactly the same on the M2 chip later this year. Certain parts of that chip will be outsourced and then consolidated at the TSMC facility. Just a couple more stories for you this week on Apple Views, and the first one of those is to do with a MagSafe battery pack. I don't know if you use one on your phone, but if you do, you're going to be able to charge your phone somewhat faster now. It's had a bump in speed. You're going to be able to charge at 7.5 watts of charging speed rather than the 5 watt that it originally came with. To do that, you're going to have to do a firmware update, and Apple suggests connecting a decoded lightning cable to the MagSafe battery pack and then connecting that to a Mac or to an iPad to initiate the firmware update. But if you do that, you'll be able to get an increase in your charging speed. So you never have to worry about having a flat battery ever, ever again. And just one more story for you this week, and it's to do not directly with Apple, but with Netflix. And I'm sure many of you have got a Netflix subscription, or have you? Are you one of the 200,000 that have cancelled their subscription in the first quarter of this year? It seems increased pressure from streaming services such as Apple TV+, Plus, HBO and Amazon have put an increased amount of pressure on Netflix, and the other platforms are coming up with better original content at better prices. You can stream Apple TV+, Plus for $5 a month, which is so much cheaper than Netflix, and better quality quality as well and better originals. It just doesn't make sense. And Netflix has got to take a real close look at their business model. But that, my friends, is all the news I've got for you this week. If there's anything I've forgotten or anything you hear about, get in touch with me over on Twitter. Let me know and I'll mention it on next week's video. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourselves a great week and I'll catch you on the next one.